What happened to you, little guy? Are you in a crash? This robot is badly damaged due to an accident. It is possible that it piloted this shuttle. I need more information about what occurred here. My touch will not make this robot functional. So it's not currently powered on. We need to see what we can find. USS Robotics Boxes. They withstand serious accidents. Oh, there we go. Got ourselves a box. Is that a battery I can put in here? Yeah, there is. Alright. This full on feet this feels like the I need some wires oh. to connect the accumulator. This entire game feels like the parts of Walking Dead Season 1 that are now the thing that Telltale Games never makes anymore. Like, all the way down to having the radial menu of the four different interact things that'll pop up when you highlight uh, circles on the map, and having the little sidebar with all these items on it. Like, it feels like they literally made, like, a Walking Dead Season 1 game. Which is good, because Telltale stopped making that game. They just started making interactive movies. It is obvious that this door leads into the hold of the shuttle. The door is locked. My observations indicate that it will not open from here. Alright, then we'll have to go upstairs and look for some wires. Let's get up there. What do we have? So this was the piloting area. Is that all we can see here? Seems like it. The onboard computer is still functioning. Oh, look at that. Jailbreak detected. Autopilot deactivated. See log for more information. Console land finder. Do diagnostic. Life support system not active. Autopilot off. See log. Power supply is not responding. Most things are not responding or locked. Yep, pretty much across the board. Ship is not ready to fly. Eliminate all faults to continue. You can open the hold. But we need a password. Whoops. Alright, shuttle commands. Critical error. Ship AI data files is corrupted. Please use manual control. Error driver IRQL not less or equal. Bunch of numbers. Check hard drive device. Try again. Turn off the alarm. There we go. One less noise. But we need a code to open the hold. And I don't think we've encountered any numbers yet. Uh, the machine can probably tell me the, uh... The machine could probably tell me the code. If you woke up. But I don't have wires for the battery, right? I need some wires to connect the accumulator. So I can't open the door. Let's look for wires. So we can only look over here. Nothing up here is interactive. That door sort of crashed open. Let's take a look back in here. Any evidence of wires? Does that door open? Aha! Grab the wires. A lithium sulfur accumulator was common for older aircraft models. It applies standard voltage, but it is not suitable for robots due to the excess weight and dimensions. We use a more efficient portable version. I have already found a working accumulator. Well, he's satisfied. Let's go ahead and get him powered up then. These are the only two things I need, hopefully, because I can't get anywhere else. It is possible that I can power it with the accumulator that I found. Where do I- oh, there we go. I'm like, where do I interact with this thing? <laughs> Alright, let's give him a little juice. This is kind of what I was talking about, the idea, like, you could just become incapacitated and then you will never get- You'll never be active again until somebody else takes care of you. 
Has to be a code. The numbers are 438 and then an asterisk. So we don't know what the last number is. I could guess it. How many times? I could probably just keep guessing, right? Let's see here. 438 0. Nailed it! I think this door is now unlocked. First try. I was like, uh, I'm like, oh, we can start at the top or the bottom? Let's just start at the bottom of the numbers. See what happens. Alright, what can I find here? Is this is this the them we're supposed to help? Seems that the, that it seems that, that robot's permanently dead now. How is this possible? The, the humans. And then we found out that there's still humans alive somewhere, but they're in a crash now, so they might not be humans they might not be alive anymore. But maybe there's more of them? Assuming these ones are dead. They could... You, you never know. Surrounded, step out immediately. What's going on? I am asking questions here. Identify yourself. RT 217 NP. Where are the passengers of this shuttle? The pilot sustained injuries during the crash and does not function. I tried to reset him, but did not succeed. How did you enter the shuttle? I was charging myself on a docking station when the crash happened. I went outside to evaluate the situation and search for remaining spare parts. You discovered humans that had been transferred in this shuttle. You hold classified information, which means that now we have to disintegrate you. No, wait. What is this? What a great and perfect utopian society where that still has police with giant machine guns that execute citizens for discovering things. Whoops. Well, this is not something you immediately associate with what has gonna happen with a machine in a game. Tied to a gurney. Come on. You're not strong enough to I rip would it not off? I recommend you do that. I would not recommend you do that. Stay still and do not try to escape or I will have to disintegrate you. That's like surprisingly and weirdly common threat so far. Who are you? Identify yourself. I am a medical droid MBR-825T called Gregory, but it does not matter now. What matters at the moment is who you are. I am RT-217NP, a robot with a wide range of functions. Basic purpose unknown. So, RT, 
I have been informed that the shuttle with our pilot crashed near a building where you were. You witnessed the crash and discovered that the fact of human extinction is false. USS Robotics withholds this information from us and releases malicious automatic updates. Every robot who contacted a human has disappeared. We know that USS uses police to search for surviving humans and then transfers them in shuttles to an undisclosed location. However, the police could not locate them all. We managed to find a few and through them we learned about the others. I added some changes into my docking station to skip updates. Apparently, I am different from most robots now. We discovered it during the diagnostic testing after the EMP detonation. This is the reason you are here. The date of your latest update suggests that your personal data hasn't been changed. We have to make a decision, RT. We cannot let you go because you know too much about our shelter and plans. However, you could help us. All of us are wanted by the police. Each time we leave the shelter, we take a big risk. You, on the other hand, can walk wherever you want. I have never met humans. I saw different things they built. Some of them are unknown to me. These artifacts have initiated a new information cogitative process in me. I want to learn more about humans, and I want to help you. Very good. That means you understand humans better than we expected. You will soon realize that you made the right choice. I will free you, and you may take a look around. When you are ready, I will share available data with you. At least I was not disintegrated. I would better look around. This is going to be so bizarre. So every single character so far is full on machine with super like monotone voice and logical statements one after another in, in a normal progression and everything. It's going to be very different dialogue than we're used to in any game, really. They're just so matter of fact about everything. For the intercom, the unit is not functioning. I cannot determine the logic of these symbols. It may be a code, but I need a key to calculate its algorithm. They don't... You, they don't... I won't, I'm surprised that... So they must just not have any... Re, they must not have any record or access to some any sort of combined information that humans had if they don't, can't recognize things like that. They, they must just have to learn things manually from scratch. Why would humans make so many interior doors? The atmosphere and air pressure is equal on both sides. It is locked. An electric fuse. It is too big to be useful. I cannot use this fuse anywhere. It's interesting just to hear them just logically break down every single thing they ever put, ever encounter, period. No exceptions. It looks like this robot is fixing something. Like there, this will be the, ch the developer's chance to question every little random thing about normal society all the way down to like what function doors per, uh, serve. Not necessarily to critique it, but just because the machines would be confused by that kind of thing, perhaps. Welcome. Hello. What are you doing here? I repair electrics in this hospital and restored already in a few blocks, but the power supply is still defective. Gregory said that you would join us. Can you help me out, RT? Of course, if it is within my powers. I need to replace the contactors in this electrical panel. Can you bring me some spares? I saw them in the utility room. It is the one with a broken door. There is no lighting there yet. In case night vision is not applicable in your model, there is a flashlight in the hallway. 
I will try to help you. Tell me about Gregory. I assume he is your leader? He used to be a surgeon who repaired humans. He worked in the same clinic as Nurse Abigail. It is understandable that they were the first to protect humans as soon as they found out the truth. Helping humans is their purpose. I am probably wrong, but after I talked with Gregory, I thought that there was more to it than just following the helping humans idea. Well spotted. I thought about that too. However, robots have no feelings, so it is possible that his emotion imitator is more authentic because he interacts with humans. He and Abigail started recruiting robots recently. The USS realized an update as soon as they found out. It made it practically impossible to recruit anyone. That is why we can only count on old-fashioned and damaged robots, the ones who did not receive the update. Our main task is to equip the HQ. After that, we will search for surviving humans and supplies. I think Gregory will tell you more soon. For now, we need to restore the power supply and communication. Thank you for the info. I will go search for the contactors. Thank you. Alright, so we need, we need to help him repair his stuff. Gotta find a room with a broken door. Apparently, Gregory sounds slightly more emotional. Not because he has emotions, but because he has a more authentic human emotion imitator for dealing with humans. There is a fuse in a trash dump. A lot of fuses, huh? Wait, can I use that one? This fuse is out of order. It is useless. Welp. There goes me. That, oh wait, that, that machine's in a, wheel, in a wheelchair. That's not expected. A medical tablet. Does it have human medical information? Patient, oh. Spooner has been admitted today. He has a major arm trauma and multiple burns, but all non-fatal. According to Spooner, his home robot forced him out of the house and prevented him from saving his wife and daughter. Unfortunately, they didn't survive because the house collapsed on top of them. Spooner is in shock. I passed him on to the psychiatrist. Rough. Is the so? Oh, that could be it potentially. What if the humans did not? Uh, what if the humans didn't fight a war to wipe themselves out? What if the machines rose up and then put out a software update? that makes all the machines think that the humans destroyed themselves. Like, we always talk about these, or these or like Orwellian situations where uh, the government controls information, it controls the people, and there's police everywhere, and they can just make reality at, up as they go along by controlling the media and everything, but if you're if you're an entire race of machines, and, all, and you all, like, Accept updates and stuff like that. Like this is more of an Adam Jensen, like, like the faulty update situation of like the, of what happens in all of uh, Human Revolution and stuff like that in in Deus Ex. Like the idea, like you can, they really can control everybody if they're if everyone's accepting these updates and changing the way that they think or function on a daily basis. This is actually a much more literal and much more practical form of brainwashing than almost as and almost any story really ever has. The purpose of the item is unknown. It is most likely a medical device. I don't think he's a very analytical type, as far as I can tell. He would definitely fail Turing tests, in that he doesn't seem to analyze anything at all. It just there's things he knows, and that's it. Humans developed genetically modified crops, and then declared them dangerous. Where is the logic in that? Well, you see, Robot Man, different humans are different from each other, and one thing can do a thing, and then another person can think otherwise. You'll learn about that as you are currently fighting against your own government. These cabinets contain provision. It has not expired yet. Seals the deal on just how long, how it hasn't been that long since the machines took over, that there's human resources just lying around. This robot's design and proportions look different from any robot I have ever seen. According to its color, it may be similar to Gregory. They are probably the same type of model. So that's probably the other machine. Is she, is that what they call her? Abigail earlier? She looks like she might have, like, 
womanly shapes, which might make sense if they were specifically designed to be human-like. The robot is missing his legs. His left arm is obviously from a police robot, and his right arm probably belonged to a construction robot. How did he get so damaged? Hello, I am busy at the moment, but let us talk later. Hello? Hello, I am RT217NP, and you? I am a medical bot, MBR411. Abigail, my purpose is care and treatment of patients. In the absence of humans, my skills are useless, so I engage myself with other matters. How long have you been here? Looks like this building has been abandoned until recently. Oh, just a couple days. We were looking for a building that could be our HQ. A hospital suits us well, because we can accommodate many humans here. Besides, it's close to the area where we plan to meet a group of survivors from the shuttle. Sadly, something went wrong. Thank you for the information. No problem. You're welcome. I do not want to disturb her. Oh, whoop, say goodbye to all of the other dialogue options, I suppose. So that's apparently a reoccurring thing, is you better choose your favorite dialogue option, because the other ones might never get a, uh, a chance to be spoken. Interesting. Not a common way to run this kind of game. Alright, let's check this place out. It's a nice little area to explore. So I, I think we're supposed to think that all of the humans from the other place were all, all killed? The other ones in the shuttle, no survivors? Just gonna take a look at it and that's it? Nope. Alright. Oh well. Thought he might be interested. Oh, yeah. Any remark about shipping a bottle? It is a model of an 18th century warship. I realize it's artistic and historical value, but why is it in a bottle? And how did it get there? They built it inside the bottle. Come on. Just a little bit of thinking. So we're, we're definitely establishing that he's not someone who analyzes things at all. He just knows how to build things that he already knows how to build, and that's seemingly it. And he's not much of a problem solver. This radio is more than a century old. It is much older than the one in my house. But apparently he can date the age of a radio while not based on sight. Oh, what's down here? This chip belonged to some unknown device. It is useless to me. Excuse me, do you not understand that you're the protagonist of an, of an adventure game? Everything could be useful to you, you never know. I do not need this chip. He is not interested in picking up random objects. He'll never survive in any other adventure game. He's sure lucky he's in this one. A holographic table. Inoperable. I suspect that is due to a power failure. So here's what's interesting here. They're talking about a the table itself, table. but look at the table there. Inoperable. That's Those are augmented humans up there. Power failure. That's some Deus Ex stuff going on on that poster up there. The human with a cybernetic arm. Gregory's design looks similar to the police robot. They probably have the same hardware. RT? Looking around? How are you doing? Have you met the others? I met Abigail. I guess she is your assistant. Her speech is not typical for a robot. I also talked to Patrick. He asked me to help restore the server. I also met Nick. He looks very damaged. He was busy, so I didn't bother him. I see. You probably have questions. Yes, you are right. Tell me more about humans. I obviously don't have reliable information. Our knowledge about humans is not complete yet. As soon as we found out there are small groups of humans hiding in the cities, we realized that the self-destruction story was not true. We know for a fact that the USS locates humans and disintegrates anyone who saw them. That is why leaving the shelter is very risky for all of us. 
We also know that the USS does not destroy humans, but transfers them somewhere on shuttles. One of those crashed near you. We still do not know where the USS moves the humans. It is not clear why the shuttle crashed. I tried to reboot the pilot, but failed. Is he beyond repair? The pilot was our ally, and he could tell us about the crash, but we do not have the equipment to repair him. His memory chip was damaged during the crash, but most of the data is still intact. So the pilot that hijacked the shuttle was supposed to save the humans from being transferred to the USS? That is right. The pilot was supposed to save them and bring them here. Most likely he knew the original USS destination. I see. Thank you for the answers. I will return to my current task. All right. That's interesting. So they kill every robot that finds the humans, but the humans themselves are just taken somewhere. So you gotta wonder what they're doing. Do they have some sort of experiment that they need humans for? Do they Are they keeping a sample of humans around in case they ever find a use for humans, perhaps? Isn't this the room I came out of? No, that's the locked one. Whoops. A little further down here. So this is the room I came out of, right? This room was the first place where my freedom was severely limited. Such situations should be avoided. Another potential idea is what if the humans turn out to have a... Uh, what if there was a human versus robot war and then the result was humans realizing that they can't fight the robots but they can't control them so maybe they put out false up updates to make the robots think the humans are just already dead to solve that problem and that's why and maybe they have control over just the police robots and nobody else and use them to cover up their tracks just hypothesizing there's a lot of potential directions to go in here I do not need it my legs function very well Ooh, very well. Look who's confident. Can't sit track with the door at all. Oh, there's a flashlight. And now I've got a flashlight. A tool set of one. And this seems to be otherwise an empty hallway. Gonna want to find our way back down to that staircase then. And see if we can find what we're looking for. Oh, wait. Oh, there's the broken door. Never mind. Staircase is not my target. I need to find some contactors here. Well, head on inside then. And we'll get right on that. Whoa. Hello. And then we established first person camera mode. Okay. This happened once with the radio, but I didn't think it was going to happen any other situation really. What's the deal with this guy? I found one electric contactor. I should look for more in case it is not enough. Okay. Oh, that's weird. It teleports into me. I don't like walk over to it or anything. An empty metal container. This is strange. A powder extinguisher. It expired six years, eight months, and twelve days ago. Interesting. I didn't actually know that uh, fire extinguishers expire. The type of thing I'd probably get acquainted to if I ever had my own living space that had to be maintained in such a way. An oxygen cylinder. It is empty. Magnesium sulfate. It is useless to me. An analog device for weighing small objects. It is very inaccurate. Oh, he's just getting snippy, isn't he? He also likes to say the word very a lot. Acrylic paint. Ineffective. Only outdated robots are covered with this type of paint. Very is a surprisingly vague word for him to be using for someone who speaks so like so specifically and efficiently usually. A toolkit. I could bring it along, but I do not think I will be back to the workshop anytime soon. I have no high temperature protection. This device could stop a fire, but it is too bulky to carry around. And besides, it is not functioning. Second contactor. The task would be easier if I had infrared vision or an item scanner. Now he's criticizing himself and his own lack of functionality. It's kind of that's kind of interesting. Yeah, they they do keep talking in very frank manner about inequalities between individual robots and how they function differently. Third contactor, it appears intact. 
whereas humans would potentially find it uh, rude to openly acknowledge differences between people on such a regular basis. Fourth contactor. I think this will be enough. I will give these fuses to Patrick. Well then, there we go. Let's get over there. But yeah, it's often considered rude to just to be openly talking about the differences between people on such a regular basis and stuff, but here it's just, they're very frank about like, nope, I have night vision, you don't have night vision, I have good legs, you do, you can't do that job because you're that type of person. The end. No escape. Did you find the contactors? Yes, this is all I could find. Good, now I can finish my work. Thank you. What else can I do while I am here? Nothing for now. Thank you once again. I am glad to be of help. RT, Nip needs your help. Please speak with him. Good. I will distract myself from the existential crisis of the government destroying me by being useful to those around me.